Welcome back, learners. I hope you had a nice quick rest. Let's look at the histogram. A histogram is defined as a graph to represent continuous data, and it is grouped in intervals represented by bars with no spaces in between. The bars are the same width. So for an example, you are given that the intervals, if we can check, we've got 60 to 65, which is 5. 65 to 70, it's 5. 70 to 75, 5. 75 to 85, 80 to 85, 5. And 85 to 90, 5. So the interval should always be equal. And then even the width of the bars, if you can check the bar, this bar and that bar, they're equal widths, this bar and this bar have equal widths, and that one and that last one have equal widths. So this is what they mean when they say the bars have the same width and the intervals are grouped um, with, with no spaces in between. So if we check, there are no spaces in between. So this is a histogram. So the difference between a histogram and a bar graph is that a bar graph will have spaces in between to show that it represents discrete data, and in a histogram will have no spaces in between to show that it represents continuous data. Then question one says, how many cherry trees are 75 to 80 centimeters high? We are given that the height in centimeters and we are given the frequency would, which would be the number of black cherry trees. So how many of them are 70 to 80 centimeters high? 70 to, oh sorry, 75 to 80. It means we are actually looking at this bar. So how many of them? We've got 10 of these trees. So we've got 10 um, trees that are 75 to 80 centimeters high. Then the next question, question two says, how many trees between 70 to 75 will be left if the number is reduced by 15%? So we are reducing the number. So we have to always try and integrate the concept of percentage increase and percentage decrease. So remember the actual the number that we have currently before for the trees that are between 70 to 75, it's actually 100%. And then if we have to reduce it by 15%, it means we have to subtract what? Remember, when we reduce, we are taking the number down, so we have to subtract by what? By 15%. So what is 100 minus 15%? We get 85%. So it means the number that we left will be actually 85% of the previous number. Then we do the calculation. What is, what, how, many num, how many trees are between 70 and 75? 70 and 75. We check this bar. We have eight trees. So it's eight trees multiplied by 85 over 100. So now we want to check how many trees will be left if it is reduced by 15%. So we say eight multiplied by 85% over 100. What do we get? We get 6.8. We get 6.8, but remember it's number of trees. We cannot have 6.8 trees. So it means the other one might be shorter than the other one. That is why the percentage is, I mean, the number is given as a comma. So we have to actually round it um, down to have exactly six trees. So we've got six trees. Then there's another method of doing this. The other method would be if you say eight multiplied by 15 over 100, what is 15% of eight? We say 8 um, multiplied by 15 over 100, which gives us 1.2. It gives us 1.2. Then we have to subtract this 1.2 from the 8. Then we will say 8 minus 1.2, which gives us 8 minus 1.2, which gives us 6.8. But remember, we cannot have half a tree or three quarter a tree or what. So it means the actual number with full trees are actually um, six trees. Okay, question three says, which tree sizes are equal in number? So we have to check the sizes that have the same number. We've got the size, which is 60 to 65, or this, I mean, and the 65 to the 70, which are all three in, in, in number because it's between two and four. So which are those sizes? We've got 60 to 65 centimeters and the 65 centimeters to 70 centimeters. So these are the sizes that have equal number of trees. Question four, which other information can be represented on a histogram? Name any two. So remember histogram represents or it represents a continuous data. So any data that can be measured can be represented on a histogram. So an example, temperature can be measured 
So we can represent um, temperature there because temperature can be um, measured. We can represent speed of a car, the car speed, because this can be measured. We can represent the height of learners. Remember they said any two, so you just have to mention two, height of learners. So you can pick any two amongst the one that I've written there. The next question says, the graph alongside gives information about a family of 16 children. Then question one says, give the title of the independent variable. So we know that in a graph, we've got two um, types of variables. We've got our dependent, which is going to be on the, X, on the Y axis. Then we've got the independent on the X axis. So we are already given the dependent variable, which is the number of children there. Then now we have to give a title for these parameters on the X axis. So what would be the title for these parameters? Because it talks about children that are not yet in school, children that are in the primary school and children that are in the high school. So it means it gives us the learner's school level, the children's school level. So it means the title would be um, children's, children's school level. Or you can say children's education level. So any, or not learner, but level. So any, um, any title that will fit the parameters that are given there or that would make sense that I have to talk anything about school or education then it can be added as a title to the to our independent variable question two says if two children if two children not yet in school not yet in school it means we are looking at this parameter um added to the family so we are adding two children to the family that are not yet in school what will be the new frequency, which frequency for the net yet in school. So we are adding two, already we've got two children that are not yet in school. So if we add another two, it means now it's gonna be at four. It means our new um, graph will be like that. So the frequency now becomes four. So it means we'll have four learners in total that are not yet in school. So, so four children will not yet be in school in this, in this family. Four. So it's gonna be four children, which is the frequency. All right, thank you for tuning in today for our class on a bar graph and a histogram. And I hope you understand the two concepts better now. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye.